Uh, hello, I'm back again. I'd like us to cover a sample question on air and combustion, still from one work. Uh, it's a very cheap topic as well. So we have this very simple question. I will broaden it as I explain it into details. The setup below was used to investigate properties of components of air. We have phosphorus, we have a gas jar, and we have water. State two observations made during the experiment, meaning during the process, Ama, as the experiment proceeds, there are some observations that you can see. An observation is something that you are able to see, smell, touch, feel, in terms of color, density, weight. Yeah, so those are some of the physical properties in terms of observations. So, um, component of air. Air contains different components, and one of them is oxygen, we have nitrogen, we have carbon dioxide, we have water vapor, and we also have dust particles. So all those are some of the components of air. So one of the most active part of air, or component of air, is oxygen. That is what we are going to discuss in our case. So, when phosphorus is burnt in air, this gas jar contains all those components of air, but specifically, the most active part, I've said, will talk about oxygen gas. So, when phosphorus burns or it is ignited in air, it forms an oxide, which is phosphorus oxide. So, Phosphorus, first, it is element number 15 with 2, 8, 5. So phosphorus reacts by gaining 3 electrons. At some point in time, it can also react by losing 5 electrons so that it can form phosphorus trioxide and phosphorus pentoxide. So in our case, when phosphorus burns in oxygen, it forms three oxides. It forms phosphorus, three oxide. It can also form phosphorus, five oxide. So what are the formulas of those oxides of phosphorus? When I say phosphorus three, it is P3, oxygen, valency 2. Therefore, I'll have P2, O3, as for us, as phosphorus 3, oxide. How about phosphorus 5? P5, O2. So, I'll have P2, O5. So, that is phosphorus pentoxide or phosphorus 5 oxide. Now, let us now try to answer the observations. What are the observations mean? First, Phosphorus oxide, when it burns in air, it normally turns into white fume. So, these ones are normally white fumes. So that is the first observation I will see, white fumes. So the white fumes are basically phosphorus 5 or phosphorus 3, Oxide. So the white fumes normally disappear after some time. Disappears after some time. So that is the first observation that I will see. Again, keep it in mind that during before the experiment, the level of water is the same between the gas jar and the trap. So this is a trap. So when oxygen is used up to burn phosphorus, the level of water will rise. So this will be the new level of water. So this one is after, this one is before. This one is after. So after the experiment, the level of water in the gas jar rises, but the level of water in the water trap drops. So that is another observation that water level rises in the gas jar.
Now let's go to the next question, write the chemical equations for the reaction that occurred. Now, at first I said that phosphorus can form two oxides, phosphorus 3 and phosphorus 5. So those are the first chemical equations that you can have. Phosphorus is a solid plus oxygen, gas, it can form two oxides, which is phosphorus trioxide, solid, or phosphorus solid can also react with oxygen gas to form phosphorus pentoxide solid and then we can easily balance them when i balance them when i put two here oxygen will be 10 meaning here will be five and phosphorus four how about this other one when i put two here phosphorus will be four four and oxygen six three so that will be the balanced form so when those two oxides are formed this oxide let me take one of them phosphorus three oxide it dissolves in the water to form an acid it is normally phosphoric acid and phosphoric acid is h3po4 aqueous so whenever phosphorus is an unmetal Non-metallic oxides dissolve with water to form acidic solutions. So I can easily balance it. So when I put two here, that will be six, that will be three. Uh, eight, three plus. Okay, let me let me let me check again on the balancing. So uh, between phosphorus tri and phosphorus pent, this one, phosphorus pentoxide, is the most stable oxide of phosphorus. So that is why I will use phosphorus pentoxide dissolved in water to form a phosphoric acid. Now let's go to the next question. The experiment was repeated using burning magnesium in place of phosphorus. There was a greater rise in water than in the first case. Explain this observation. Now, magnesium, it's a very unique metal. So at very high temperature, burning magnesium burns and it burns while reacting with two gases. So magnesium normally reacts with two gases. I say I gave some components of air and one of them was nitrogen. So magnesium, when it burns in air, it burns with two oxides. So magnesium plus oxygen, it forms magnesium oxide. And again, magnesium plus nitrogen it forms magnesium nitride. So generally, when magnesium metal burns in air, it forms magnesium oxide solid. And again, when the same magnesium burns in nitrogen gas, it forms magnesium nitride which is also solid but the two are in white color both of them are white in color so when i balance this one this one will be three and the other one is two so that will be balanced so generally why is it that when we use magnesium there will be a greater rise in the water level so when i use magnesium the water level will be Greater. This is the reason why magnesium reacts with oxygen and nitrogen. So, generally, magnesium, magnesium reacts with nitrogen and oxygen. That is why there is greater rise in the level of water in the gas chamber. Now let's do the last question. After the two experiments, 
The water in each trough was tested using blue and red litmus paper. State and explain the observations in each case. Now let us start with the first one, phosphorus. We say that during this experiment, phosphorus react, phosphorus oxide that is formed here in the dish will react with water to form an acid. It means that the red litmus paper remains red. While blue litmus paper turns red. How about in the case where I use magnesium? Now, magnesium is a metallic oxide, while phosphorus is an unmetallic oxide. So, metallic oxides, when you dissolve them in water, they form hydroxides. And this one is basic. It means that when we use magnesium in this experiment, the red litmus paper turns blue, while blue litmus paper uh, remains blue. Similarly, when I use magnesium nitride, when I dissolve it in water, it forms the following. It forms magnesium oxide, magnesium hydroxide, sorry, plus ammonia gas. But keep it in mind that ammonia gas is an acidic gas. Not acidic, but uh, ammonia gas is a basic gas. How? When I dissolve ammonia gas in water, it forms ammonium hydroxide, and that is basic in, na in nature. So I hope you've learned something from phosphorus and magnesium. Thank you. Let's meet in the next class another time. Bye.